The heading I'd like you to make is multiplying and dividing fractions. That's what we're going to be focusing on this lesson. Now, as I make myself a bit more space on the board, I'm well aware of the fact that a number of you are pretty comfortable with multiplying and dividing fractions. Others of you, it's something you've maybe encountered, you're like, oh, I can't remember how it works. Some of it actually is quite confusing. Regardless of which you are, one of the most important things is if you're in that first group, you're like, I feel like I've got this down pat. Like, I feel like I can just do these questions. I know what the answers are. I want to push all of you who feel like I know how to multiply and divide fractions. If you haven't written the heading, and I think I've already put the date up there. I want to ask you if you know some rules or if you know some processes for multiplying and dividing fractions, I'm going to get your participation in a moment, but not yet. I want to push to see, do you know why? Do you know why you do those things? Okay, that's what I'm going to be aiming at today. We're going to be doing some pictures, actually. So if you have a ruler in your pencil case, get it out. If you do not have one, I have a grand total of three to lend out. Actually, I have four, but you probably don't want to take this one. Get a ruler out. If your partner's got one, someone nearby, that'll probably do. But it's really helpful if you have your own. Before we get to the actual, do you want to borrow one? Is that what you're, you're looking around? You're like, okay, fantastic. That's very generous. Okay. Before we get to the actual operations, multiplying and dividing, what I would love you to do is jot down with me underneath your new heading. Can you remember with me just how to deal with fractions? We spent some time with integers, like I said, with some decimals. Let's have a look at a fraction like, say, this. Okay. Now, I'm not going to ask you to say it, but I would love a show of hands. How many of you know the specific names that we give to the number on the top, number on the bottom? I'm not going to ask you to say it. I just want to get a sense of how many of you know the names. Okay, we're pretty good. In that case, hands down, all together, I'm going to start with the bottom one. I know it sounds weird, but it starts with a D. It's the? Yeah. Wonderful. Can you write it down for me? Now, I'm starting here because fractions really are all about division. And this number on the bottom is the thing you're dividing by. Now, we call it the denominator. It's a little bit like, you know, when you're handling physical money, cash, right? People say, oh, you got a $5 note, you got a $10 note. We call that the denomination, right? It tells you how big is the thing. What's the size of it? $5, $10, $50, okay? In the same way, the bottom part of our fraction, the denominator, tells us what size fraction are we dealing with. Okay, great. Most of you put your hands up as well for the top. Starts with an N. It's numerator. the numerator. Very good. So this is not about how big it is, how big each part is. This is numerator. What number of those parts do you have? So in this case, the size of it is each part is a fifth. How many of them do you have? You've got three of them. Does that make sense? Okay, so that might seem really basic. It is, but we really need to be clear on this to move to the next part. So when we think about, I actually picked some numbers out for myself. I just want to remember what they are. Let's think about 3 quarters multiplied by 2 fifths. Now, I know some of you have the answer already for me. Great. That's not what I want yet. I want some understanding because I know some of you know exactly what process to get and you get an answer. That's good, but I need some deeper thinking here, okay? When I think about numerators and denominators, to really know what's going on here, I want us to draw a picture. This is what your rulers are for, okay? So would you, underneath where we've written three quarters and two fifths, would you draw for me a pair of rectangles? It's important that the rectangles are the same size. Now, I promise, I know some of you are like, I know the answer, I know how to do this. We're going to get to the process in a minute. But first, I want to get a picture of numerator and denominator for each of these things. So let's just start with the first fraction, 3 quarters. Like I said, even though it's a bit funny, we start with the bottom, right? So it's quarters. So I'm going to take this rectangle, which represents 1, and I'm going to break it up into quarters. So I'm going to do it like so. I'm going to do this one into rows. You don't have to do it this way. I could have done it into columns, but I do encourage you for this, as we're doing this together and trying to understand it at the same time, maybe do it in a similar way to me. So three quarters means we've got each part being a quarter, 
there's four parts, one, two, three, four. And in fact, I'm even gonna label them one, two, three, four. So you see the quarters. And when we say three quarters, I mean that, well, I'm gonna take the first three. It doesn't have to be the first three, it can be any three, right? But let's go ahead and maybe if you've got color pencils, which I do not have on my whiteboard, you can shade in these three. Yeah, it looks pretty neat. These three out of the four. So three quarters, we're pretty okay with this, right? Can you tell me what might be a helpful thing to do over here on my next rectangle? Yeah, go ahead. So um, you divide the rectangle by like five lines. Mm -hmm. Awesome, okay, so I am gonna do exactly suggested, but I'm gonna tweak something. You know how I did this into like rows, I guess? I'm gonna do this one in columns. Dividing it to fifths is slightly trickier than doing it into quarters, but you've got a rule there probably, and you've even got a grid, I imagine, so you can do this quite neatly. I'm gonna do my best, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball this like so. What do you think, do they look like fifths to you? Are you satisfied, they're okay? Please don't take a ruler to it, I think it's close enough, okay? So, in just like how, the same way I did before. One, two, three, four parts, there are quarters. Here, I've got one, two, three, four, five parts, and just as suggested, I'm gonna shade two of them. Okay, so this is essential, right? And I really don't want us to skip this part, even you're like, I learned this last year, or maybe even in primary school, right? You've got three parts here, each a quarter, and you've got two parts here, each a fifth. All right. Underneath where you've got this, I've run out of space here, so I'm gonna go over here on the right-hand side. I'd love you to draw me another rectangle exactly the same size as both of these, okay? So it's just gonna be three rectangles, all the same size, but draw it underneath for me. And go back and do it like so. What I'm doing is a visual representation of the arithmetic, okay? When I'm doing three quarters times two fifths, I'm really thinking about dividing it into quarters and also into fifths. Quarters first and then fifths, or in fact, you could do it either way. So this is gonna get a bit messy, but four rows and five columns, we're gonna get a grid here. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's go ahead and do the rows. I think they're a bit easier. And this is where, if I stuff it up, this is where it's gonna happen, but we'll do our best. Okay, what do you think? That's like a, that's like an eight out of 10, right? That's pretty decent. I've got a thumbs up, thank you. Okay, now, what's going on here? Well, I'm sort of taking each of these and I'm overlaying them on to the same diagram. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this top part, like so. There's my Three quarters, so far so good. And I'm gonna borrow another color here. Really should have done this one in red, but I forgot. I'm gonna take the two fifths, which are in columns, right? So here come the two fifths. Like so. Three quarters times two fifths is this overlapping section. Let's try and highlight it, make it really, really obvious. Here it is. This is the part that has both colors in it. And you remember, coming back to this first pair of rectangles, I numbered these one, two, three, four quarters. I numbered these one, two, three, four, five fifths. How many parts are there in my new rectangle? Yeah, go ahead. There are 20. And let's just for the sake of it, let's number them, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You get the idea. Now, of these 20, so I've divided this into 20ths, how many of them are the ones that I'm actually interested in? You can all tell me together, it's six, six of them, right? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. So what does this equal? Six out of 20, right? Now I know some of you, right at the beginning, you said, I, I can do this, I don't need to draw anything, right? The rule for multiplication is you take your numerators and you multiply them across, and then you take your denominators and then you multiply them across. The critical part is why though, right? It's what's going on here. By the way, you wouldn't normally leave an answer like that, would you? Six out of 20, we could simplify this further. What could we write it as? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Three out of 10. Three out of 10. Now I'm gonna give you a second 
I'll give you more than a second. I'm generous like that. Draw me a fourth and final rectangle, same size, just like all the rest. If this is a picture of 6 out of 20, what might a picture of 3 out of 10 look like? There's more than one right answer to this. Don't tell me. Draw it for me. Show me. I'm going to give you, yeah, maybe a minute, minute and a half. Draw it up nicely. If this is what 620 looks like, this is going to look similar. You're telling me they're the same thing, right? But these are not tenths, these are twentieths, right? So let me give you a moment. How would you draw it? And then we'll come back together. I want to see what you come up with. So I had to wait a little bit because I didn't want to spoil it. And I wandered around and I found a bunch of different versions of this diagram. Can you see why I've... Excuse me. <clears throat> Can you see why I've drawn it... Hey, I have a frog in my throat. That's funny, isn't it? Didn't bring my water with me, which is not very clever. And I don't think I want to drink any of those three bottles up there. Who knows how long they've been there for. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Yeah. We're just going to try. Okay. Can you see why... Oh, there we go. My voice is back. Can you see why I've drawn these three tenths in the way that I have drawn them? Because I know some of you just drew a rectangle, divided into ten. That's fine. It's not wrong. But can you see how this is directly... Like, my colours are the same. Even my boxes are in the same spot and you can see why there are 10 of them, right? I numbered them so that you can see them clearly. I want you to understand when you're doing equivalent fractions, it's not just number stuff, right? There's actually geometry going on.